I'm Dr. Mark Sertica, physical therapist. I did upright rows for 30 days in a row, and in this video, I'm gonna discuss how I did it, why I did it, and why you should abandon shoulder impingement as a diagnosis. So let's start with how I set up the programming for the 30 days. So I began by finding my 12 rep max using a fairly controlled tempo with minimal momentum and landed on a measly 65 pounds. I then did three sets of that every single day, keeping the weight the same, but trying to progress by using a narrower grip, a higher pull, and even a more controlled tempo. I would generally tack them on at the end of my workouts or perform them completely cold without a warm-up on the days that I didn't work out. So why did I perform 30 days of upright rows? Was it to convince you to do the same? No, this was way more volume than I would recommend, especially since it was a novel exercise for me and I was still performing my normal upper body workouts. I really just wanted to show that upright rows aren't inherently dangerous. I understand that this is just my personal experience and N of one, which is why I wanna walk you through some research as well. I wanna outline six reasons why we should abandon shoulder impingement as a diagnosis. For the first two reasons, I'll pull directly from a paper by Jeremy Lewis. Reason number one, area of pathology. So when people think of impingement, they think of structures being pinched between the humeral head and the overlying acromion, most commonly the supraspinatus. So if that was the case, we would expect the upper portion of the supraspinatus to be rubbing on the undersurface of the acromion and becoming frayed, but that's not actually what happens. It's usually the underside of the supraspinatus that shows these changes. Reason number two, acromial shape. There are three general shapes of the acromion, flat, curved, and hooked. We would expect individuals with the hook-shaped acromion to demonstrate increased rotator cuff pathology from more impingement occurring, but that's not what the data suggests. Reason number three, shoulder kinematics. A common recommendation for upright rows when they are programmed is to perform them at 90 degrees of shoulder abduction or less to minimize impingement. But if that recommendation is based on the impingement theory, it's not supported. Lawrence and colleagues summarize the research well here. The smallest distance between the rotator cuff tendon insertion and coracoacromial arch occurs between 40 and 75 degrees of humerothoracic elevation. In most individuals, the rotator cuff has passed medially under the acromion and is no longer in a position to be compressed by 90 degrees of humeral elevation. And they state that humeral internal rotation has been shown to increase and have no effect on acromial humeral distances. So is this position really impinging on structures? Reason number four, special tests. One argument against upright rows is that the position looks similar to a common orthopedic test that physical therapists and doctors use called the Hawkins-Kennedy test. However, there's been a big pushback against this test and others over the past decade because of their poor diagnostic value. A recent paper even suggests putting these tests out to pasture or getting rid of them. Reason number five, surgery. So if we are to assume that the acromion is impinging on the underlying structures, then shaving it down, increasing the subacromial space, and decreasing the likelihood for impingement should reduce pain and improve function. However, a recent systematic review with meta-analysis concluded that subacromial decompression surgery provided no important benefit compared with placebo surgery or exercise therapy and is probably associated with a risk of serious harms. Reason number six, negative connotations. Oftentimes, individuals will get x-rays and be told that their shoulder pain is due to this bony issue, and then think that the only solution is surgery despite the evidence just presented. Then, why this diagnosis is still so prevalent if I'm presenting this argument against it? And honestly, it's just become so indoctrinated over the past 40 years in schools and clinics and on social media that it's difficult to change people's perceptions without getting some pushback, especially when extremely influential YouTubers are pushing this idea. 
And I do want to point out that maybe your shoulder pain responded really well to exercises or interventions that were designed specifically to treat shoulder impingement. And that's great. I'm glad you got better, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it had anything to do with actually changing shoulder impingement. Upright rows are safe. If you have symptoms associated with upright rows, it's better to think about that as an overload issue rather than an impingement issue. And this can happen with any exercise, squatting, push-ups, even walking. But we don't label those exercises as bad. And there's not a single paper that demonstrates that upright rows are harmful or risky. Should you do upright rows? It depends. As soon as I finish my 30 days, I completely stop doing all upright rows. They're generally recommended for training the delts, but I personally prefer lateral raises, so I don't really have the need to do upright rows. There are some really strong and smart individuals that do upright rows because they probably fit their goals. But if upright rows don't fit your goals, you don't like them, or they're uncomfortable, and there's another exercise that delivers the same stimulus, you don't have to do them. What I hope you take away from this video is that shoulder impingement is an outdated diagnosis and the upright row, just like any exercise, isn't inherently dangerous. And if you liked the video, help us out with this YouTube algorithm, tap that like button, subscribe, and leave some comments below.